Now welcome to another path to Ahsoka. This time it's the man, the myth, the legend himself, Grand Admiral Thrawn. Yes. And boy does he have a history. <laughs> he does So indeed. much of a history that I just, I can't cover it all here. Well, we're only talking new canon, right? Because if we go, yes. with legends, we go with Legends, this would be a very doomed. long video, yeah. I mean, he's got, what, six books? He shows yeah, up in the yes. comics. He was in Rebels. Thrawn is a big player. He should be a big player. Yes. So I'm going to try and condense to get you as much as you would probably need to know for Ahsoka, and maybe a little extra for funsies. Well, you said you weren't really going to delve into the books too much here? No, I'm going to probably skim the surface just a, just a tiniest pinprick fraction of what Just in Thrawn, case they actually kind of take in those into account, which would be cool. But I'm but I'm probably going to even touch on that less than you think because there's so much to go over. Well, the book, yeah. Trying to get you to know who he is coming out of Rebels, which is where Dave Filoni is most familiar with him. Yeah, which is where they're mainly going to draw from. They're not probably going to draw from the books too much, which I hope they do, but we'll see. All right. Well, Thrawn is a chiss, obviously. We well, not obviously. Not everybody knows about the blue people out He's there in the unknown the regions. He's part of the chiss ascendancy, yep. which all are in the unknown regions. Or the chaos has... Mm -hmm. It tends to be called. Then he eventually, of course, he did become a Grand Admiral in the Imperial Navy during the age of the Galactic Empire. He has a very, like, calm and collected demeanor, and he's a brilliant military strategist known for his anticipation of enemy attacks and his own tactical precision. You could say he's worked to perfect the art of war. <laughs> also, very, like, an interesting way, he has a high respect for his enemies, Believing that in order to defeat a worthy opponent, you have to understand them in every aspect, including their history and philosophy. This their art, their culture. Exactly. This goes along with his strong appreciation for art, that he believes studying it lets him delve into the psyche of the people and cultures that the art belongs to. How do you think Thrawn would feel about our art and culture? I'm more interested in what he'd think of what AI art is. AI art? <laughs> he, would, he would be very confused by AI art. like, I don't, under, I, don't, I don't understand. What culture is this? Where it's is not, the history? There's none. Sorry, it's sorry, just Ron. I'm a very, computer. I'm very sorry. Yeah. But moving on. A short time after the formation of the Galactic Republic, he encountered a colony of refuge Nemoidians. The colonists at that time warned him about the tyranny of the Empire and pled with him to bring the full force of the Chiss Ascendancy against the Empire. This is kind of Thrawn's real first introduction to the Empire as his people were now exploring the line, pretty much, between yeah, the, the edges, outer, yeah. yeah, between where they are and the rest of the galaxy. Yeah, they don't really, each side doesn't really know about the mm -hmm. rest or what they're doing. So Thrawn reported back to his superiors about the encounter, and they were concerned about this report, and wanted to know whether the Empire was, like, a good ally or not. Well, they got problems out there in the uh, unknown regions, yeah. Yeah, so he was given a mission. He would infiltrate the Empire in order to either make it an ally or weaken it to become easy prey for other threats. <laughs> Gotta love the Chiss. Very smart. <laughs> he did work out a plan within his people. He was publicly stripped of his rank and went into a fake exile. Fake exile allowed him to eventually kind of get picked up by the Empire. Yeah. And he even got to meet Palpatine. He informed Palpatine of the Chiss ascendancy and that there was a mysterious threat in the Unknown Regions. And he was offering up his information on the threat in exchange for the Empire's help. He wanted to convince Palpatine he was to be trusted, and he offered up the name of Skywalker as someone who could vouch for him, because he had come across him years before. Yeah, during the Clone Wars. During yeah. the Clone Wars. And they went on a little mission together, because That's... everyone knows everyone in the galaxy. <laughs> Somehow Thrawn and mm -hmm. Anakin met each other. It's, it's a good book. It's the second <laughs> book in the first Thrawn trilogy in the new canon. The Emperor informed Thrawn that Skywalker had died at the end of the Clone Wars, but he had spoken highly of him before that time. Oh, really? <laughs> wink, wink. Yeah, Thrawn will be winking at that, too. He, he figures that out yeah. in the second book, that yeah. same second book. The Empire then offered him a role in the Imperial Navy, and his career was highly successful, and he had, of course, a series of promotions where he eventually became Grad Admiral, which the Emperor awarded him himself. Hmm, that's, yeah, that's pretty much how you gotta get that rank. When Governor Price requested a strong commander capable of defeating the rebels on Lothal, Grand Admiral Thrawn accepted the challenge, intent on dismantling the rebellion one piece at a time. Yep, that's in Rebels. Yep, so we've, we've moved to the show already. Yeah. I had to, like, turn his entire life into a few minutes. There's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff mm -hmm. in those books, especially the second 
trilogy that goes deep into the Chiss ascendancy and their culture and a lot of things. It is it's a very good read, but it would be a really long recap. Yes, Thrawn proposed an initiative to develop a new starfighter in the Tie line with improved offensive and defensive capabilities. The Tie Defender multi-role starfighter, or Tie Defender for short. Unlike most models in the Tie series, the Defenders would come equipped with deflector shields and a hyperdrive. Which deflector is shields. Why would pilots want that? Because like ISB officers captured and interrogated renegade Tie fighter pilots who sought to defect the rebellion. The agents' briefings showed that all of the captured would-be defectors were reluctant to pilot fighters that lacked energy shields or hyperdrives. As a result, the Defender would not only be more effective at defeating rebel fighters, but increase loyalty among Imperial pilots. And he was given the authority to use Lethal as the location of his TIE Defender program and manufacturing plant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Imagine that. If we make a better ship, more of our people won't defect. <laughs> Shields. Give them shields, yeah. Give them shields and hyperdrives so they're just stranded in space if the, oh my, if the can fleet you leaves that? them. Can you imagine being just in a ship in the middle of space? And they're like, well, we're That's retreating now. Fate. And you're like, you, you just left me. You, you just left me to die with no Oof. shield and no hyperdrive. Well, the shield ain't going to matter, but the mm-hmm. hyperdrive really will if you're uh, in the middle of no space, yeah. Mm-hmm. Intelligence of the Starfighter project was eventually leaked to the Rebellion. While not the full details, they had enough information that Phoenix Squad, a.k.a. the Ghost Crew, started to spy and even sabotage them. During this process, Thrawn rooted out that Agent Callus from the ISB, who we kind Talk of talked about, about in the Zeb video, video yeah. had become a traitor to the Empire and kind of used him to find out that the hidden rebel base was located on Adelon. I think we got two cats looking for a hidden rebel base right now. Yep. Probably hearing him in the background quite a bit. So then Thrawn decided to take his uh, fleet, his like entire fleet, and go and destroy that rebel base. They inflicted heavy casualties on the rebels there. He forced the rebels back to the surface, took away the sky fight, then ordered his fleet to bombard the base from orbit. They put up a prototype deflector shield, which prevented serious damage from bombardment, so Thrawn came down with some AT-ATs, then managed to surround and capture important rebel members, such as Harrison Dula and Admiral Dodonna. Captain Dodonna? I don't even know what his rank was at this time. General. General Dodonna. Yeah. And other important rebels. When Hera refused to surrender, Thrawn threatened to kill them one by one, beginning with Kanan, who he had deduced with his smartness that that was her <laughs> love interest. Smartness. Well, you know. But... Unfortunately for Thrawn, something happened he could not count on. The mysterious force entity known as the Bendu arrived after he was provoked earlier by Kanan. The Bendu used lightning to destroy both the base as well as Thrawn's troops and um, one of his walkers, giving the rebels the window they needed to flee into space with their comrades. Can't predict the force. (laughs) He would have won if not for the Bendu, the one in the middle who's not supposed to pick a side that Kanan may choose a side. (laughs) Sort of. But und- Still didn't pick a side, he just destroyed everything. <laughs> yes. But undaunted by this new enemy, Thrawn ordered his soldiers to fire on the Bendu, effectively ending its rampage. Thrawn viewed the battle as an Imperial victory. Yeah, why not? Well, they did chase the rebels yeah. back out into space. They had to leave supplies, and it's they a did win. lose ca- You know, there's casualties. Yeah, they lost ships, the base, resources. Yeah. Following the battle, Thrawn confronted the fallen Bendu. He asked what manner of creature it was, and the Bendu replied that it was beyond Thrawn's power to kill. The Bendu also predicted Thrawn's defeat at that time, describing it as many arms surrounding you in a cold embrace. The surviving rebels fled to Yavin 4. Shh, don't tell the Empire. <laughs> They're listening? Maybe. The Rebel Alliance was determined to prevent the mass production of the TIE Defender elites. After they saw Thrawn's new ships in action and even managed to steal some flight data from one, Thrawn was then holding command on one of his flagships when he was informed that the rebel starfighters were entering the system and realized the long-awaited attack on Lothal was commencing. He knew they'd eventually come for his... his. He knows everything. He did. Well, he does know everything. Except for the Force. He reasoned, of course, that the rebels would target the TIE Defender factory in the Lothal City Fuel Depot in the capital. He had Governor Price shore up the uh, ground defenses, and during the battle, Harrison Dula was successfully captured. Hooray! Oh, uh, whose side are we on here? Oh, Thrawn? Boo. Oh, boo, sorry. While Governor Price was torturing Hera, Thrawn entered Price's office and asked if Hera had yet revealed the location of the rebel fleet. 
During his questioning of the rebel leader, she remained defiant. Thrawn then showed her her Kalakori and talked about the shapes on the Twi'lek artifact and questioned her about her lost brother because he knows so much about art and stuff, he figured out what everything well, was know, on it. It's like a family tree kind of thing. So. Hera responded he was unworthy of even holding it and he promised that it would be in good hands. Though, unfortunately for him, he had to leave because Grand Moff Tarkin informed him that Orson Krennic had persuaded the Imperial authorities to divert further funding to his Project Stardust. Hmm. Yes, the Death Star. Thrawn, Spoiler alert. Thrawn protested that the Emperor had already assured him that he supported the TIE Defender program, to which Tarkin replied he had arranged an audience with the Emperor for Thrawn to plead his case. That's when Thrawn immediately had to depart Lothal aboard the Chimera to return to Coruscant, which is when Hera escaped and Kanan died, and yeah. the Rebels get a win because Thrawn had to go and defend his project. Yeah, otherwise mm-hmm. probably would have gone much worse than just Kanan. When he returned from Coruscant, he found that Ezra Bridger and his forces had taken control of the Imperial headquarters in the city. It was like a big dome thing that was in the middle of the city. He kind of tricked the Imperials to say that there was some like, evacuation protocol, so the entire garrison came into the dome, and then they're like, we're going to launch the dome out of Lothal and blow it up. It's such a rebel's plan. Well, they were going to launch it out, and yeah. they planted explosives because they were just they were going to blow it up. Like, yeah. bye. It's hardcore. I well, like it. Thrawn returning positioned... His ship, the Chimera, is Super Star Destroyer. That's not a Super what Star is it? Destroyer. It's just a big... De- it's not even a big Star Destroyer. It's, it's just, just a destroyer named yeah. the Chimera. Position it directly above the dome so that the dome crashing into it would rain debris onto the city and destroy the city. Kind of pincer maneuver or yeah. something. Well, no, nah, but just a I dick know. maneuver, I think, is... It's smart. Pro- no, it's smart, yeah. This led Ezra to surrender himself to Thrawn aboard the Chimera... Thrawn warned Ezra not to attempt any heroics or he'd resume bombardment on the city. He's got all the cards now. You try and fly up, you're going to wreck your city. I'm going to shoot down and wreck your city. <laughs> I win. Lose, lose. I win. I'm Thrawn. Upon arriving, Thrawn took Ezra to his office and showed him the display of art he'd collected from Lothal, explaining he intended to preserve Lothal's art and culture. He told Ezra that he had never originally intended to ravage and destroy Lothal's people. He actually respects all life and doesn't like to unnecessarily kill. But he now believed it was inevitable because of the rebellion that Bridger and his friends had staged. He did respect the people of Lothal in their culture and sought to preserve as much as he could while beating the planet into submission. He's just doing what he has to do. (laughs) He's a good guy. Do what must be done. (laughs) The rebels managed to gain the upper hand in the Battle of the Thal. Thrawn stated it was only a momentary setback, but then multiple unknown uh, contacts emerged from hyperspace and destroyed Thrawn. Yeah, they destroyed his blockade fleet in orbit. It was the flock of Pergil, which were summoned by the ghost at Ezra's instruction. The Pergil wrapped their tentacles around the Chimera, smashed them through the viewpoints, and holding Thrawn in their grip... The mini arms of the creatures holding him in their cold well, embrace, yeah. just as the Vendu had foretold. Is it official that a, a multiple pergil is a flock? Yeah, I think so. Okay, it's just curious. Or it's a pod. Whales would I be would a think pod. it would be a pod, yeah. That's kind of why I was going with that. That's a but pod, hey, whatever. pod of pergil. <laughs> Sounds better to yeah. me. The creatures carried the Chimera, including Thrawn and Ezra, into hyperspace, and they disappeared. Then the a, end yeah. until well, so again. Then around 9 ABY, rumors began to circulate that Thrawn had returned as the heir to the Empire. <laughs> so on the nose. Ahsoka told Sabine about this. Ahsoka fought one of Thrawn's associates, Morgan Elspeth. You know, he, they fought in a duel because she's trying to get Thrawn's location. Around the same time, there was a Shadow Council that had kind of reformed out of the Imperial Remnant warlords which were all waiting for Thrawn's return and his leadership for the military. Well, not all of them were waiting. Some thought Well, maybe... if you weren't waiting, you died, so... Yep. Yep. Because he's coming back. But that is the story of Grand Admiral Thrawn, as condensed as I can manage. That's pretty good. You got the, you got the basics. Thank you. That was, that was hard work right there. Yeah. Next week, I'm probably kicking myself because it's going to be really hard for me to do, is Ahsoka? Oh, she's got... No, there's very little out there about her. I mean, just, just the Clone Wars and the Rebels and there's a book and Tales mm. of the Jedi and, you know, she shows up in Mando and Book of Boba Fett. Yeah, not much. Seven seasons of Clone Wars. Unless I skip it and do something else next week and get myself two weeks to work on Ahsoka. Ooh. So next next week, we're going to be covering the mysterious world between worlds. 
It's mentioned in one of the episodes that Dave Filoni suggested as a primer to watching Ahsoka to know the history of the world between worlds, and so we will provide as much as we can about said world. Yeah, well, that's where the whole Ezra story kind of spawns from. What happens to Ezra is, mm-hmm. is connected to that and Ahsoka's promise. So it's it's definitely worth touching on again. Yeah, so if you we're, we're going to go over the world between worlds, hypothesize on it a bit, and then the week after that we'll do Ahsoka because I need two weeks of prep time for that. But I thought Thrawn's story was long. It's a drop in the bucket, the Ahsoka story. Sort of, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of Clone Wars. There's, there's a, a lot, lot of Clone Wars. Pops there's up again in Rebels, book, Tales of the Jedi. Yeah, tell, she's all over. Yeah. To start with her baby pictures, honestly. Yeah, you can start way at the beginning, like her birth. <laughs> saw her birth on screen. Yeah, so, well, not on, we didn't actually see the birth, but yeah. Hmm. That'd be awkward. But anyway, that's all we got for you this time. Now it's your turn to take to the comments below and tell us what you think of the story of Grand Admiral Thrawn. And let's talk some Star Wars. So until next time, thanks for watching.